Hello, today we'll be looking at this charger and other thing from uh, Toolkit RC called the M6. But just before we get into that, a quick reminder to please like or dislike this video if you didn't like it. Comment down below, please subscribe if you haven't, and don't forget to click on that little bell icon which will tell you when I'm uploading videos. So the Toolkit M6, I actually reviewed the Toolkit M8 uh, a little while ago, which I thought would be quite useful. It worked as a charger and it did a bunch of other things like you were able to test receivers by plugging them in and you could look at your SBUS or PPM and you could do the same outwards. It was like a servo tester, all sorts of little bits and pieces. I thought it was quite reasonable as you sort of paid for a charge and then got a few bits more. The M6 is a slightly cheaper cut down version of it uh, and it comes in a bit cheaper, which is not bad, although it seems to have a colour screen. So what do you get in the box? Well. You get the little unit itself, which is tiddly tiny. It's got um, input here on XT60. It's got um, a servo input. It's got um, five volt, 2.1 amp USB output. Uh, and then it's got output there for your charger and it's got your balance leads to go in there. It's got, instead of the little jog wheel the last one had, it's got these little sort of touch button type things. That's the main unit. It's got these little legs to come out as well, which is quite handy. So it's not just flat and that allows the fan to spin. Get rid of some weight. Also in the box is this little thing which contains a sort of USB to USB lead. I, I guess that works as a sort of lead extension. And a, a very brief manual, which looks like this. Uh, this is one of these things that I can't really show much unless we get a close up. So let's do that now and we'll run through what it can do. Okay, so let's run through some of the features and what this thing can do. Uh, for the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna power it using this battery. Obviously, you'd be using something a bit heftier like um, a decent power supply. This one will do, uh, what is it, 25 amps. This will pump out a max of 10 amps charge. So depending on what you want to charge, you, you might want something like at least five amps to uh, power this from. Now, one thing I do notice, it's fine to read for the eyes. Under my lights, the screen practically disappears. So I'm gonna turn way down here so you can actually see what's happening. Indoors under a normal light, this is fine to read. I do notice that this corner here is a little bit darker than the other stuff though. If you can hear banging outside, there's workmen doing stuff to my guttering today. Fun stuff. Anyway, let's go through the, the main options. So in this situation, you've got the up and down keys, uh, that acts as sort of stop or back and that the circle button acts as okay like that. I'll, I'll put it on the little things. I noticed these are these are quite weak these little bits but they sort of work. But we'll, we'll hold this up so hopefully we can actually see what we're looking at. Um, as you see you've got this is along the top here is like a, a, a quick thing so you can add another battery to it so This one is LiPo, uh, and obviously the end voltage is 4.2. You might want to add a new one for LiPo HV or another one for Life, or you might want to change your charge or discharge current. And you can add new types of batteries there, or obviously every time you go in, you can always just change it around. So if I go back up here, small fingers are best. If I press there, I can cycle through high voltage, life, lion, nimh, pb, and uh, obviously back to lipo there. I can also, it, it sets itself to work out how many cells there are by working out if it's got voltage coming into the balance port there. And then you can change your charge current all the way up to 10 amps and your discharge current. Now the discharge thing's kind of interesting. It says it can do up to two amps internally or eight amps in what it calls recycling mode. Now normally uh, that is power comes from the battery and back out. So you'd kind of be looking at a big battery here which you are sort of sucking a power straight from it uh, and into this battery. I, d I don't think you can do it if you're on mains power. The, uh, I haven't really looked at that in all honesty, because I, I figured if you were wanting to do serious amounts of discharging, there are better tools than something kind of simple like this. And obviously what you do is you just plug in a battery like this one. And this is a, 
a 1.3, so let's uh, set that. And you can charge, discharge, or storage charge. And I just start charging that. It uh, checks that I did want a 4S battery. And as you can see here, the charging indication is not bad. It gives the uh, voltage of each cell, gives you a sort of visual indication of how full your battery is, the percentage, the amount of milliamps it's put in, the amount of charge it's doing at the moment, and your battery charge. All quite good. It also gives the the in voltage. As you see, I'm, I've only got 12 volts coming in right now because I've I've just got this little free S battery attached. It wasn't uh, ever going to fully charge this, obviously. So let's stop that. So while we're there, the other thing we've got is a measurer. So one thing you can do is measure the battery, and you see this is a, a familiar thing. It, it's uh, measure the voltage here, and you can go on and, and balance that if it's out. You can also measure the internal resistance by saying test. This is a, a brand new battery. This is a, an R-Line version 3 1800. So you'd expect the internal resistance to be quite low. It's all under 10. Quite how accurate this is in terms of internal resistance is anyone's guess. But I normally use this as a, this is how it starts. And if it gets worse, if I check it every now and then, I can check if the battery is aging or how it's aging. So the other things it can test is, is PWM. That's pretty good if you've got an individual um, servo connection from a receiver. I can't believe the amount of noise that's going on outside now, but here you go. Uh, PPM, if you've got a PPM receiver, that'd be useful to test. And uh, S-Bus here, and I've, I've got an S-Bus receiver here I can use. I thought I'd test it with this. So the place to connect receivers or servos or whatever is here, so let's plug that in. What I've also got is this quad, which has a, an X4R on it. So I'm just going to replace that little port, which is the S bus, with this one. If we now go into measure and say we want to measure S bus, we've got nothing going on because what's happening at the moment is I haven't connected. Well, I haven't turned on my radio, so let's turn on my radio, see if we can get something happening. Right, and having turned on my radio here, which is hooked up, I've got all my all my normal stick movements. If I've got the mode switches, that all seems to work quite well. So, while I don't think this is going to be an everyday feature, it's quite useful just if you've got a receiver, you're not sure if it's working, it's like what modes it in. You can test it out there, you can test individual channels of a receiver with PWM, um, and if you're in PPM, obviously you can do that too. So in output, what you can do is basically use this as a, a little desktop power supply. If you go into power, you can take uh, basically the incoming power and decide what you want to put out as. So if I wanted, for example, to create uh, something like a 3.3 or... That's a bit sensitive here. Let's say a 5 volt power output. I could just start that and then coming out of there is 5 volts. So if you were doing wanting to test a camera or a VTX or something that just wanted 5 volts input, you could uh, rig this little bench supply very easily. So that's quite neat. So the PWM is uh, an excellent way of testing something like a servo. Oh look, here's a server here. Let's plug it in and see. So I've got my servo. If I press OK, that's at manual at the moment. So what I can do is just go into another mode like Auto Free, which is a fast one. And then we've got ones that slow it down a bit, like Auto 1 and Auto 2. And obviously I can put my own uh, frequency in. Just by going down here, holding down the button, you can see the server move. All pretty good. Things like PWM and SBUS bus slightly less useful. You'd have to go here and basically this would put this whole thing out. And then what you can do 
is you can say, okay, I want channel two outputting, let's say, another figure like that and then that will go out of the S bus. Uh, I can't see many options where you'd want to use that. Perhaps if you were doing something and you hadn't got a receiver to rig it up yet you'd want to sort of find out things but slightly less useful I guess. Uh, and then finally you've got settings which I should have gone in earlier because then I could have said hey I should turn off those beams <laughs> which is probably annoying everybody by now. Uh, and you've got a whole bunch of settings in there which you can see. The, the one I've bumped up is the, the backlight. The backlight's at maximum, but I'm still getting this slight darkness area there. But uh, yeah, there's a, there's a bunch of things in that you can see. That's what it does. What do I think of it? Well, as a charger, it does an okay job. Yeah, it's, it's uh, a cheap and cheerful charger. It goes fine. You obviously need an external power supply to charge stuff. I like it that it can do multiple battery types, including high voltage, which um, is important. The, the measuring stuff, I think that's going to come in useful once in a while. Output, again, once in a while, always good to test a servo out, just to plug it in and get the centre position. So it's kind of like, it's cheap enough to say those bits are for free. You won't use it a lot, but when it's there, it's quite handy. So the, the downsides I found, you may have noticed it, it's a little bit sensitive and sometimes you don't hit the right bit when you're trying to press these things. The previous one had a little jog wheel, which was much better, but it is more expensive, but you know, it, it can also charge at a high rate. But as is, this is quite an interesting little thing. It's quite a good little proposition. If you're just getting into the hobby, if you want some small and uh, cheap little charger, then this is not bad at all. As you can see there, it will do a two to six S battery. Uh, it do up to 10 amps. Uh, and obviously you can balance charge, storage charge, and discharge using this. So there you go. This is the Toolkit RC M6. Um, I'll link as well to the M8 because that was quite an interesting one as well. Um, I hope this review has been useful to you. I do apologise about the noisy workmen outside making noise. Until next time, have a good one. I'll see you later. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.